Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 4, episode number 8, Reaction. Okay, why only one episode today? Because I'm a little bit busy, so I won't be able to, um, you know, like, record both the, um, both the episodes in one video. Uh, and at the same time, I did want to make something today, you know. So that's why I decided to make one video. From the, like, you know, next week onwards, it'll be again two videos, like, the way I usually do it. So yeah, that's why one video today. Uh, sorry, one episode today only. So yeah. Anyways, um, let's start. Okay. So the previous two episodes, a lot of things happened. First of all, uh, Korra had like a one versus one duel with Kuvira, and we can see that Korra is still not like you know the poison is out, but his, her mental uh, state is still not okay because you know like the whole trauma and everything is like in her head and she has still not been able to uh, confront her fear or if you can like you know explain it in that way so when she went to have the avatar state she was still struggling and that's why she wasn't able to do anything and obviously like you know a lot of times she did not uh, like you know was unable to practice so her i feel like her combat prowess kind of got reduced as well and kuvira is a good fighter so yeah everything was at her disadvantage so even though she was the avatar she wasn't able to do much um so she ends up getting knocked out and uh well, like you know um Ikki and um uh not Ikki, sorry uh jinora yeah uh, jinora and um what's her name opal you know they both of them are able to somehow ask for help from Ikki and milo and get her out of there so that's what happened and you know like um zafu is gone you know, almost gone to Kuvira's hands. Uh, Su Yin it has been captured. Nothing you can do about it at this point. So that's what happened. And the next episode. Oh, and also the whole thing with um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Varric is also happening. And you know, Varric and Bolin somehow are able to threaten them to blow up the whole train. And they did end up blowing up the train and somehow get out of there. So like you know, positive. Uh, like you know improve like in a positive direction we are going both in both the sides and uh, yeah so then what happens is uh, varic and bolin they get almost uh, like you know captured by uh, some the re-education camp people and they thought at first they thought they were enemies but then they were like all right you'll be our ticket to get us out of here and uh, while on the other hand Korra goes to republic city meets asami you know bolin not bolin sorry marco and prince Wu. And Prince Wu gets kidnapped. <laughs> and then we go and help out Prince Wu. While on the other hand, Bolin uh, and Varric gets into trouble with the, uh, the, men, the people, the soldiers and everything. And there's like a huge fight happens where Varric uses his brain to actually make something which completely defeats those mechanical things. And they are able to get out of there as well. So, yeah. Now let's see what happens oh and in the end we gotta get like the the glimpse where oh boy batar jr is in the um swamp and they're trying to cut the tree oh boy toff will be pissed and i can't wait to see what toff is going to do <laughs> i'm pretty sure toff will completely hopefully destroy them because this is toff you know like the person who made metal bending and these are you know they, they <laughs> what can they know about metal bending that Toph can't do? I'm sure Toph will handle it, hopefully. Let's see what happens. So let's start. This is episode number 8. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Think it whichever is a preference and let's get started. Alright, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go! Hmm. hmm. Alright. Hmm. Who? Shiro Shim is that his name? What what the hell is Aman? What? Wait. Is this a recap episode? 
Oh no 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 okay never mind. All right. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's practicing. Okay, training. <laughs> Oh my god, Granny will moan be happy. <laughs> Cherry berry lemonade. I would love one. <laughs> uh, you can change. What? <laughs> you think he was... Because he never asked. <laughs> oh my god. And Asami as well. <laughs> Whoa, what the? Okay, it is a recap episode. But this is an interesting way they're doing it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> True. Obviously, because she's an avatar, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, woo, you're being weird. No. Well, yeah, obviously this happened and he just, ah, uh, like this part I hated Marco so much, like in the se season one and kind of season two as well. Not season two, but season one. Wait, I never, I don't remember this scene. <laughs> That's not how the scene played out. Why is he lying? This never happened. I don't remember Asami doing this. Oh, I guess that's how Marco saw the scene. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Like, I just hated Marco so much in season one. You know, like, the, his indecisiveness is just so aggravating the whole drama made me crazy oh yeah then bowling was like okay i remember this bowling's <laughs> bowling was just okay <laughs> wait what okay What? No, you were. Oh my god. Like, you know what the funny thing is? <laughs> it really did feel like season one was just the whole drama. Like, you know, as they're explaining this re recap, it was all drama, season one. <laughs> Boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, they did not show this scene in in season one i was really like i said like you know in season one like they didn't even break what happened so this happened okay why did they skip it in season one i did oh boy Mm 
No. <laughs> and then Marco did something else, you know? Oh yeah, Korra became this rebellious teenager, you know? Suddenly, the season 2. <laughs> Oh my god, this season was so aggravating, season 2. Season 2 was so aggravating. The whole thing with Korra being completely, like, and I acting like a little, <laughs> little kid. Oh. oh yeah, oh my god. And then she, he started, okay. Yeah, and then we got together again. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this was just so my, you know, the whole... Yeah! Mm, I guess, but... <laughs> but still, you know, like... She completely, she completely won the amnesia route. <laughs> And Bolin, Bolin is like, yeah, like, what is happening? And he did not say anything at this moment. Like, so bad. This seems so bad, you know? Like, like Asami is just like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> uh, look at this. Look at this part. Yeah. Look at Asami. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay, shut up, Marco. Yeah. Thank you, this guy. He should he should be the main character. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <sighs> and Cora's like, yeah, I've had enough. And I'm glad this happened. Like, you know, like Marco completely just going from one like you know, person to another, one person to another. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that Marco just cannot contain his, himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Like I said, each character, like different characters are going to narrate it in different ways, I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. Top set, okay. Well, I don't take off by his her words you know like nah that's not what she wanted to tell her she oh god
Okay, Cora's going to say it from her perspective now, okay? Yeah, she got that, the kind of that trauma. Blood bending. Yup. Oh god. Yeah, it's ridiculous how many times she just lost her power and gained it back again. Like, over and over again. Like, it's definitely going to traumatize someone. Yeah, and this guy came up. Raiko, another foolish... Yep, Una lock. Oh boy. But in, the, I think like in one of the previous episodes, they said, as they said, like this kind of did a good thing where Korra came to realize that. The spirit world and the human world should be kept, the, the portal should be kept open. That was a good thing. Because humans and spirits coexisting was, in the, is in the long run going to help, I think. Yeah. Like, look at this, season 2 again. She just all, like, almost loses her powers. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was just saying, you know. In the long run, it is a good step. Yeah. Like, that's part of the process, you know, like, Definitely not all good will happen. There must be some bad that's going to happen as consequences. This was one Yeah, but the earth queen herself would do so many bad things, you know, if she still lived Like it's a good thing and a bad thing to everything Yeah, that's why the avatar is there Yeah <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, you're gonna have your own statue now. <laughs> uh, not as big as Ang's though. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay, who's going to narrate Ness next? What? Uh. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hero of the world. Ah, <laughs> oh, makes sense. Well, that was part of her character development arc, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> is that Varric? That's Varric, isn't it? 
Yep. <laughs> I remember this. What is happening here? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there was an end singing. Exactly, Bolin. Sit down. <laughs> Wait. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Get <laughs> the machine. Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. Through imagination. Wait, what? <laughs> what the hell? Um <laughs> Wait, oh my god, the way he's explaining this. <laughs> oh my god. Exactly, Varric. <laughs> Evil squared. Yeah, that's better. What? Oh. <laughs> Dodging fruit. <laughs> it's Bolin. Oh my god, they really ditched him. Oh no. Yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's still more. Okay. <laughs> Terra Square. Whoa! What? Hmm. <laughs> Yo! Oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> Queen of the fairies. What is this magic dust? <laughs> uh, wait, what? Oh, really? <laughs> well, that was a good one. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So true. Wow, my god, the, the way they made this. Okay, this was an interesting way to watch a recap. Okay, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, I thought this was going to be like a plain old boring recap, but wow, they really did it in such, in such a good way. And I, I really was going to like, you know, like probably going to stop if it was like that. You know, like usually in the anime as we see, you know, recap. What is a recap? Like they just recap the whole thing and it's just the same thing. But so I, I was probably going to like you know stop in the middle and not record this anymore or, or just like you know but as 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 I saw everything and as it went on I really liked the way they did it so I just kept on watching so yeah I'm I'm definitely going to upload this and uh yeah because this this is such a good way that they did this recap so yeah I like this this is so good especially the final section with <laughs> Varric's explanation of the whole <laughs> the way he changed everything this really reminded me of avatars uh you know like um uh oh, what episode was it i don't remember but you know one, in one of those episodes there was that one little play that ang and uh, you know everyone went to watch like you know a little play that was happening where at first it was so funny and everything but then we got to see that it was all fire nation propaganda you know so it was like it had like a little twist in it you know like they kind of recapped the whole thing but at the same time they kind of added its own twist i feel like this was also something like that where each character kind of explains the story in their own way from their own perspective kind of <clears throat> adding funny commentary to it like uh you know like for example at first bolin was talking about you know, his uh, like you know his love life <laughs> later on Cora talks about her like you know like things that she thinks that um was the problem with her how she has not been able to uh put up with the expectations of everybody as she thinks you know and in the end varic being varic just thinking about his next business like you know what next business thing that he's going to do a new mover you know like they, they still have not like you know like kuvira is still doing her, her own thing but this is Varric, you know, she, he's going to think about what project he's going to do next, what next mover. So he just came up with like a completely new um, scenario of everything that happened and twisting it to make such a good story. So yeah, that was this whole episode. And um, yeah, thankfully, I did not stop it midway because I was I was actually going to, you know, because, because as soon as I realized it's an it's an uh, you know, recap, I, I would have probably stopped it, but I, I felt like it was quite funny, so I kept on watching, and boy oh boy, that was really entertaining, I loved it. This is how animes should do recaps, in my opinion, like, what, what an amazing way they did this, you know, just with its own twist, and we also got to see what the, all the people, like, and all the characters are thinking, and what they are doing now, you know, uh, like, you know, Asami is talking with uh, Korra, Tenzin is also there, while on the other hand, um uh who is starting to train with uh you know marco and uh varic and bolin they are just on the boat just on their way <laughs> yeah okay uh, obviously this won't be a big discussion i'll just talk about what to, like, you know, actually happened the first section was obviously marco explaining his you know love life of season one two and three i guess as well like I think in season three he bo broke up didn't he or was it season two 
no he officially broke up in season three i think yeah no or was it season two okay i'm, I'm, I'm forgetting now either way you know um <clears throat> he talks about that and i love the fact that this whole section you know kind of shows everything from marco's perspective because we can see that scene when asami comes in and asami's like oh i'm so sorry i didn't see you marco looks up and we see asami just you know just taking off her uh, what do you call it the helmet and doing uh, like this you know hair flowing marco's just i don't remember that <laughs> happening in season one did i forget i don't think so that never happened so this shows and that was this scene was completely from both marco's perspective that is how marco saw it <laughs> and we were just audience looking at the whole thing you know so we, we saw something different we saw just saw uh, like, you know asami come in and just asami is like oh are you okay like takes off the helmet and marco gets up marco kind of blushes a little bit that's all we see but from her his perspective so many things happened you know she took off her helmet her hair started flowing there. <laughs> you know usual typical um, you know like drama dramatized um, you know these type of sections how they are dramatized so <laughs> yeah that kind of thing so that was from marco's perspective which is kind of interesting as there were quite a few things that like one thing i don't think they ever showed us that Correct me if I'm wrong. That scene where you know in the when sh he he breaks up with Asami officially, you know, did did they show that in season one? I don't remember. I don't think they showed that. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But as far as I, my memory goes, I don't think they showed us that scene. You know, that's why I think I remember in season one saying something like. Oh, he didn't even, like, you know, tell Asami properly and he just, like, you know, goes along with Korra. Like, what the hell is happening? Like, the, the basic decency at this point is to just tell Asami that, oh, I'm breaking up, this and that. So, yeah, I'm sorry. And then move on. But did, he didn't even do that. I, I think I said something like this in season one. But, they, but here we go. Like, <clears throat> he did tell Asami. So... Is my memory that bad or did they really did not show this in season one? I think they did not show this scene at all. So either way, you know, like that, but still that does not in no way does this like, you know, what can I say? Like just negate everything that <coughs> Marco did. What Marco did in season one, two and all like you know, kind of three as well was just so what can I say? Like I, I loved the fact that one of the his brothers or like cousins or something that's something like what what's your problem is that you are fearful of disappointing everyone or someone that's why you try to run away from this and yeah exactly thank you so much that is the problem with marco and i hate that you know like what he's not uh, realizing is that him trying not to hurt others is actually hurting them more you know <clears throat> like asami and Korra especially what he did in throughout this for the first two seasons was not acceptable at all you know and i hated marco for that so much he's so much better now that he's not going into these type of things and like you know like he's just living at, like you know his life as um, asami and Korra's friend just friend so it's so much better now in season one two and almost three as well i really hated him so much because he just kept just trying to just run away and like you know run from his responsibilities not actually explain what's happening and just doing his own thing for example you know that that part where he just blatantly lies to Korra about them not breaking up at all while just Asami is just waiting and watching and Asami is just like what the hell you know like why are you not telling the truth and that thing you know which obviously later on he did apologize but that does not actually negate the wrongs that he did so these things these things annoyed me so much throughout season one two and you know that marco i i hated marco but now you know as as soon as he's he's just just distanced himself from these type of things like not like you know getting into relationship with Korra and asami so everything's so better and uh, as he said like yeah i realized that that is not everything you know, like being a friend is also a, such a good thing and i've been able to understand that i should put 
others before me you know like what he was doing is he was afraid of disappointing others which is something that he was not doing for someone else's sake he, he was doing it for his own sake he was disappointed he was afraid of disappointing others which is actually his own problem you know he was scared and to do that he hurt others and uh, that was his mistake so there you go he has understood that and it's a good ending and everyone's happy i guess now <laughs> no more drama and i'm so glad the drama section is gone because i don't know why but in like you know like i i, I these type of drama i don't like it at all like you know this whole thing of just this, that's why i just really avoid these type of animes you know which has so much excessive drama and i just cannot you know it, it drives me crazy how much like you know these characters just do some take some stupid decisions like that's what makes me crazy so yeah and uh, that was marco's version of the story and uh, he he tells everyone how like you know he has changed and yeah he definitely has changed you know and i'm glad i'm glad about that and then in the cora situation the way cora explains the whole story it's how he's she's so disappointed in herself that's her whole thing you know like i feel like she as i said before like she's just a person who thinks like she, since she's the avatar every responsibility falls on her and you know she has this weird type of a thing where she does not ask for help from anyone there's so many people who are ready to help her she just does not you know she thinks that she should do everything on her own that's the big problem on for her so you know like her getting the trauma for like you know taking when amount tape took everyone's bending away that then in season 2 also like you know almost getting her power taken away in season 3 again her power just goes away and like all these things like every season gora somehow got some kind of a trauma some kind of a you know thing and all these stress just piled on and on and on and now look at her she's just completely like you know like, like there's like a ptsd in her and she cannot even go to the avatar state so <clears throat> this is something that is like you know like has been eating at her and i feel like in cora like in the legend of cora this whole mental aspect comes into play so much like this was not the situation in avatar the last airbender and had no mental like you know uh, like you know what can i say these type of issues of like you know stress uh heavy expectations this and that there was there was no such thing that ang ang and they, ang did have to face something you know there were a few things that he did have to face you know these type of situations for example uh, the whole thing of you know when he went to guru patik that that whole thing of leaving your earthly binds behind so those things he did have to face his own share of problems mental problems but cora is just like you know in legend of cora there's so much you know like she, she went through that the problem here is not that she's not strong enough the problem here is that she's just stressed you know and she needs to heal properly from the inside before he like you know like he obviously she needs to like you know like outside uh, what do you call it like you know physical uh, things can be healed as time goes on i guess mental things as well but it's very difficult to change your mental like you know um Uh, what can i say like you know heal your me- yourself mentally because you have to confront your fears and everything and you have to change yourself you have to make an active effort if 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 you get a wound outside you know if you get like a cut outside if you <clears throat> keep it away just like that for a few days take rest it's going to heal automatically you you don't have to do anything extra probably just put on a little medicine that's just it no it, it doesn't work like that in mental issues you know you yourself have to understand the problem have to work on it otherwise it would never ever get okay so that's the thing with cora here now she has to face her own fears and has to come to an understanding with herself otherwise this thing cannot go on uh, like it will go on so <clears throat> that's why like you know, cora like says everything like she like even here as well in this flashback she presses at how much she has probably disappointed everyone she just looks at the negative just like like you know like asami said like as like you know obviously you, there were a few negatives that happened but vastly good things happened for example cora talks about how you know the whole thing with unolak went and she she did not like trust in denzin how she hurt others this and that you know like obviously those are the negative sections but 
what about the positive sections for example the whole thing with the spirit world so many things happened the spirit the kind of spirits are free to come and go now that's a good d d direction they're going now since that happened you know so many airbenders has come in and that's such a good you know, uh, you know progress again Aura takes uh, Cora takes the negative part of that and says like oh even Zahir got to know airbending so I messed up but that's part of it you know like you, you cannot expect everything to go bad like you know in, in a positive direction there will obviously be a few negative parts of everything you know like <clears throat> for example Zahir he was an exception he was the person who should have never gotten bending so this is how like you know and, and that's and at that moment uh, you know as Tenzin comes in and later and says that yeah we are here to stop those like you know like there will be positive change there will be negative change we should keep the positive change and try to work on the negative change and just you know like just take it out that is how we improve and we proceed we move forward you cannot expect everything to go okay there will be something bad you need to focus on the good and try to make uh, it so that the bad doesn't happen from the next time onwards or work on the bad and try to take it out that's how you do it so yeah there you go that's that's the whole thing and for a like you know for us sense of responsibility is so much that she, she she still hasn't been able to come into terms with everything and she talks about how naive she was how she thought that oh i can do everything but now she's getting the dose of reality you know and she's she's like ah like you know what have i been doing and that's even making her more depressed so yeah she needs to get out of this this like you know weird cycle of self-hate and whatever you know so yeah i'm sure that will happen little by little and in the end that was the, the final section was such a great section varic being varic just makes such a weird type of a play i love the section where <laughs> that was such an unexpected part i was like what is happening <laughs> zahid phone calls um vatu and vatu's like yo dude i'm just stuck in a tree what can i do now <laughs> and then amon and unalak and everyone's just ignoring unalak not talking like wow what what where does he come up with this you know obviously this is varic so he comes up with these weird scenarios and it was such a <laughs> such a great thing that we saw like and i like the fact that that in, in this in the in the mover you know even pabu did something like you know if it contributed to the whole scenario more than cora did <laughs> you saw what happened cora just got defeated <laughs> like you know and then in the end uh, <laughs> what's her name um bolin had to come and save her as as you know very kind of uh, adds in in the end like that was so crazy and the way he changed everything you know like the, the the everything the way everything happened he just mishmashed like you know zahir with um vatu like they never met and but he still mishmashed them and you know like it's just just all the way like you know the way everything just happened like the chronological order was a complete mess in this the way like you know varied made it and like in the end he, he, he even converted Jinora to a to a what did he say fairy like yeah fairy doesn't he? yeah like a, like a fairy princess or whatever he said <laughs> and he says that <laughs> the fairy dust is the ones that made the stars like how can someone's imagination go that way in this situation they're out they're actually running away from people <laughs> the people who are following them and very comes up with this so yeah that was amazing i don't know how people will like it you know they definitely will you know what i feel like they definitely will people love these type of things you know so in the end bolin was like what is happening why are you guys okay you know like the way varic is saying everything nothing makes sense and stars are fairy dust what the hell is that and everyone's like Ah, don't you worry this is just a mover you know like and Varric was like yeah like you know don't let the truth take you out of the excitement of a like you know imaginary situation so, which is true you know like these type like you know stories and everything should definitely have 
a big like you know like you know imaginary what can i say like you know sections where you should not think about the truth just forget about it and just enjoy yourself you know that's that's basically what like you know like um i feel like and I, this is one thing i also like you know believe like where like uh, this uh, multiple times where i see people uh kind of saying like oh this is not how it works in the real world look at this anime how everything is happening this is not how it's supposed to work this is not how reality works and i always think at that moment that this is a goddamn anime if this is this worked like how reality works then that's like you know what enjoyment are we going to get we we get our excitement because we watch these type of crazy things happening which would never happen in the real world so that's how we get entertained and we like it that's the like the quality thing that anime and any time not only anime any type of you know show story any type of uh, like you know things imaginary things which has like a storyline gives us like that's the biggest thing like you know since it's not reality that's what makes us happy you know since you know, it's not bound by reality's rules and society's rules that's what makes us happy we're like oh my god look at this crazy scenario this would never happen in the real world you know so like you know complaining because something is not like you know like these type of shows are not according to how it goes in reality is kind of weird in my opinion but there is definitely some sections where you should think like you know for example um some scenarios where they are actually going in on a very deep or a very um, important topic which has close ties to reality and society that is the part where you should definitely give more focus on reality and everything you know those are the exceptions those parts you should give more focus on that you know but other than that you know when everything's like some crazy thing is happening it's like a completely imaginary world where i don't know like um like you know what can i say like something crazy happens for example fishes like you know fly in the sky or something you know like these type of scenarios <laughs> it's a imaginary show it's an anime it's a tv show that's why you should definitely look not look at reality and judge it through like you know like that just enjoy it this is a story you know you're supposed to enjoy it not thinking about the you know way thing things goes so that's what Varik told in the end and i completely agree with him at that and that's why i was just so much laughing when Varik was just coming up with these weird scenarios you know talking about how fairy dust is the actual reason why stars exist <laughs> talk like it's like you know showing us how <laughs> zahir phone called fatu all these things like so that was so good i loved it oh my god and i love the fact that while in the in the middle of it <laughs> bowling kind of broke down because he started remembering opal and how she is probably so much disappointed with him <laughs> oh god and i love how varic in the end varic was like ah, everything will go well don't worry this is how everything is going to go and bowling is like really are you, are you sure are you sure this is going to how it is going to go <laughs> will she forgive me so yeah that was funny okay good episode uh, even though this was a recap episode that was such a well done episode so yeah i'm going to end it here as i said like you know i i i'm a little bit busy today so i won't be able to record two episodes so only one episode from next week two episodes again so yeah that's it thanks for watching this is my reaction to episode number um eight of the legend of Korra book four if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out that's it thanks for watching i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of Korra. until then goodbye and have a nice day